So I already gave this away. We have to use T-scores. But what are the two things you need to tell me? What's the most important thing to tell me? N is, yeah, greater than 30. So I can do something. And then which thing can I do to your Z? Well, I don't know sigma, only know S. So then I use a T-score. So the mistake, some of you guys have just lived this mistake. Of course I give you a standard deviation. I have to give you a standard deviation. Which standard deviation is it? That's what tells me. So I always get people down here that say Z-scores because we know the standard deviation. That doesn't make sense. T-scores were invented from when I only know the sample one. So then which one it is is completely what it's all about. So now I know I can use T-scores, or I have to use T-scores. So it's a how many tail test? One tail test. We hop down here because it's less than. So it points me in the direction of where the tail is. What's my degrees of freedom? 44. 44. That's a little bit evil, but, you know, par for the course with me, right? So then I would accept either one, to be honest, because it's a little bit right on the edge. Technically, you should go to 40. But I would accept it if you want the 44. So let's see. One tail test, 0 0.025 is right there in the middle. And I stop at one of these two. So 2.021 is what you should use, but 2.014, I would not take points off for that. What's wrong with the way I've written it so far? Negative. It's gotta be negative. It's a piece of paper, so don't complain to me. The piece of paper didn't tell me. Uh, you're the human. We know it's below the mean, so it's negative. And then what do I shade in? Where's the rejection region? In that tail right there, yeah. So that's what it means by define the rejection region. This is visually. And then what's it sound like when it's in words? If, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. If T star, because I'm using T scores, right? If T star is where, then I can reject the null. Yeah, if it's less than. And if you use 2.014, you're okay. I would probably, no, I would not take points off in this case. But anytime your degrees of freedom is not on the chart, you should go to the next one down from that. In this case, down to 40. Reject the null, which means I would also be able to support the high in that case. And that's really just saying if my sample is so freaking down below what the null thinks it is, I can reject the null. Looks like that guy's wrong. That's all it says. Just being a little more specific about, all right, what's far enough away? What is that? Well, in this case, it's this. Now, what do we know from the sample? X bar is 10.4. Uh, S is... Two point, you can do it, Jeff, 2.34. So what's the new standard deviation? This is where people get a little confused. Any of you confused about why I'm going to do this? S is a spread for individuals. It happens to be a, from a sample. That's why it's got the letter S. I still need the spread for groups, groups of size 45. So I've still got to do this. I don't care if it's S or sigma. I've got to change it into one for groups. So I'm going to divide that by the square root of 45. And whatever that is. 0.348. So you guys got? Or has anybody gotten that far? Should I? What is it? Is it different? Let's see. 2.34 divided by the square root of 45. 0.349, yes, I like it. So you see that? You got a, the next number is an eight. It's got to go up to nine. Squeeze. Okay. And now, do you guys remember when we first learned about T-scores? I tried to tell you that T-scores are the same as Z-scores. They really mean the same thing. They just are bigger to cover for that one thing we're not sure about. So the formula doesn't change. It's the same. So a T-star formula is the same formula. What's our data? 10.4 minus what's the supposed middle? 
11.2 divided by the spread. Let's see what that is. Looks to be about 2. 0. 0.8 divided by 0. 0.35. 2 point something. 2.86? Yeah, negative 2.29. Yeah, 10.4 minus 11.2.8 divided by 0.349, negative 2.29. Did we make it far enough away? Yeah. yeah. There we are. We're right there. We made it below that negative 2021, which again, the null thinks it's here. We made it there. So it looks like I have set evidence to reject what the null said. So we can reject the null, support the high. And again, unfortunately, this is the third sample in a row. I think that uh, the claim is HI. It doesn't have to be. But I'm going to use this language. So did we make it? Yes, so we have found sufficient evidence. To, to what? To support the claim that, what? What was the claim? Uh, new pain reliever brings relief. No, I'm sorry. New drug, less time than the old one. Yeah, that new drug takes less time than old drug. Bam. Does your, does your statement have to sound exactly like this? No. You could say we have found sufficient evidence to support the claim that the new drug takes less than 11.2 minutes. It's basically saying the same thing from a different standpoint. All right, so we're going to do one more of these just to see how much I could push my luck here uh, before you all revolt. Uh, and this time, let me see. I'm going to force you to work with somebody else because I'm evil. All right, I like that. All right, I could do this one of two ways. I could either put you with one other person or you could find one other person. What do you want to do? Find one other person. Find one other person. I'll do it now. Find, find somebody. Uh, it's like what happens with soulmates in real life. They happen to be geographically close. That's crazy. Not soulmate. You got the one next to that. You guys got somebody? Everybody's got somebody? I should have put you together. So this time, work with someone on this. Make sure you each understand what's going on. Everybody's doing number one, the Ford Focus problem. 